Today we're talking about when do you need to plant what? Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey folks, welcome. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Thank you for joining our Halls Tools Road by Road Garden Show. It's called the Road by Road Garden Show and we come on every Thursday night, folks. So if you're new, Glad you joined us. We talk about growing your own food. We talk about vegetable garden. Talk about some herb garden. Basically, growing your own food. Mm -hmm. How about that? Thank you for joining us. You know, some of our some of our friends have been a little guilty of starting their plants a little too early uh, this year. I heard that rumor. Yeah, some people uh, have been texting me some pictures of having their they plants. They might live in Alabama. They may live in Alabama. They may have jumped the gun on their transplants. We thought, man, what a good time to do talk about when when to plant what. So that's ready always for spring. Get ready for spring, and everybody jumps gun sometimes, but you'll pay the price for that. So we're going to dig into that. And we're we're going to go over it by zone, but be sure to put in the comments. Especially the zones five, six, um, and down. Yeah, we need your guys' help in six and five and four because we don't know a whole lot about that. So give us some insights of what you think when we need to start what then and help everybody along because that's one of our weak points is up north. We do pretty good up to zone six, or I do. And then zone six after yeah. that, I'm just, it's so fogged. It's, to me. it's six where um, the Adams Greenhouse yep. is. Yep. So we got good connections there. Yeah, we got good connections up there. And naturally, very, it just gets rough. And our daughter lives up there. Yeah, she lives up there. So we got some some insights there. All right, so. What you got going on in the garden? Oh, man, I'm getting everything ready. I, I'm So it's really wet here. We've had a lot of rain the last few days, which we needed. We needed the rain. But there's not a whole lot you can do in the garden. But I'm constantly walking out there planning what I want to do. Oh. I'm going to make some changes this year. Cool. And I'm walking out there thinking, what am I going to change? How am I going to change this? No, I'm going to change some of my layout of my yeah. garden. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out where I can grow a lot more different stuff and smaller rows of it. So I'm gonna break out part of my garden in 12 foot rows and I'm gonna have one variety per 12 foot row. The reason I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna try out some things to get some other things. Mm -hmm. So instead of planting one big plot of something other, I'm just gonna have shorter, smaller rows of different type varieties. So I smaller can tomato patch this year? Smaller tomato patch this year. Quite as many tomatoes. <laughs> We had a hard time giving them away last yeah, year. Yeah, we had. I, I went overboard on my tomato patch last I year. I called somebody, you want some tomatoes? Yeah. yeah. How many do you want? Yeah, I know. And uh, they come by and I just fill up the back of their We had truck. prettiest tomato patch last year mm -hmm. we've had in a long time. And it was nice to share them all. Yeah, yeah. I've been in my garden, I harvested my carrots this week. And I used my freeze dryer. So if you don't know, Sheila got a Harvest Right freeze dryer that she's been using 24-7. No, she's got it just I, about. This last week, I, I kind of laid off. I did do some milk. Um, we were supposed to have some company coming. We do not drink a lot of milk. And uh, they were not able to come. So I was like, what do I do with this milk? I don't want it to go bad. So I freeze dried it. And that is just the most amazing stuff. Now, I hadn't reconstituted it. Reconstituted it. <laughs> that word. But, um, but now these carrots. But it's going to really, really, really be nice when you get ready to do some cooking. You need a little bit of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'll go out and buy a little, like... So is it like powder? It's powder, yeah. Powdered milk. Yeah, it's like uh, powdered milk. If you just buy powdered milk in the store. Okay. Um, but these carrots, I also did some fermenting carrots. But I did some sticks and some little round slices and some shredded. And I've been eating these as a snack the last couple of days. I really like them. You were not that crazy about them. Yeah, they're fine. I, it just kind of caught me off guard. The flavor is really nice. It's the texture that kind of caught me off yeah, a little bit. It's like a veggie stick. Yeah, if you was to buy the veggie sticks in the grocery store and the little uh, potato chip bags, mm -hmm. This is exactly what they are, except they got seasoning on theirs. You know, I wonder if you could season these before you freeze dry them and they would have the seasoning on them. I mean, I think it's a little too late at it now. It's really weird texture out there. It's almost cardboardish. Yeah, but it's, 
It's got good, good. carrot taste. It's like eating good cardboard. <laughs> I'll keep the snacks to myself. No, I like them. And I can see, well, that's going to come in handy. Yeah. So last year, I froze and canned all my carrots. And I think I've got two pints left. I've used all those that I've frozen. So this year, we ate on them a lot more than we did last year while they were getting ready. And they were so ready to harvest. A couple of them, I got a video coming out probably Sunday week, on how I freeze dries these. Some of them had a really soft part, soft spot in the middle, so they were ready to come out of that bed. Yeah. More Just imagine eating a carrot with zero moisture in it, and that's exactly what you're getting right there. But you know what? Think about this right here. We all have desires to eat more of what we grow. This is a great method right here of being able to preserve your harvest and have it without having to rely on electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I put a, now if, if you know, these will keep, they say 25 years in the Mylar bags, um, I don't think these will stay around the house that long. So I just put an oxygen absorber in the bottom. Is that recommended? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Can you buy those off Amazon? Well, so many came with the freeze dryer, but oh, yeah, okay. you can buy them off Amazon. Okay. You know when you get things from yeah, the store, I, I just they didn't have know. the oxygen absorber. I there. wouldn't have thought about putting it in there, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you can pretty much freeze dry anything. Is there anything you cannot freeze dry? Yes. And I can't think of that right now, but yeah, in the little book, there's a couple of things that's not recommended to freeze dry. I think honey is one of them. Mm-hmm. That would be strange, wouldn't it? It would be strange. Well, but honey don't spoil anyway, so why would you want to yeah. freeze dry it? So if you're, and we, we have, we go through these cycles from time to time. If you did want to eat out of the garden 12 months out of the year. Yeah, yeah. That would be, yeah. that would be a great way to well, do it. Well, you know, it. I've got the bananas and strawberries and the apples I did, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I've been eating as snacks. And Yeah, think yeah. about your cabbage, your kale, and all that kind of stuff you could put up. Beets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I need to do some more beets. Yeah, beets would be good. Yeah. And we're having to, uh, we've got new health insurance yeah, this year. So we're trying to do better. Yeah. Uh, had a little call yesterday with the uh, nutritionist. nutritionist telling us we had to eat better. Yeah. So I told her it's not that I don't know what I should and shouldn't eat. I just like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we're, you can look at this and tell we're evidence of that. We just like to eat. We like to eat good food. Speaking of that, we had some of the best collard greens over the weekend. Mm -hmm. or, or, or you did. I had them last night when I got back. That was those top chops. Top chops. And they were delicious. Yeah. So one of our neighbors got some uh, Jimmy Reed cornbread for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Since my company did not show up, my neighbors got to enjoy all the cooking I did. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of blown away with the Jimmy Reed yeah. cornbread. They'd never eaten it before. And he called me was talking about it. He just went on and on and on. I said, look here. First time I ever eat it, and I remember it distinctly, I looked at Sheila and I said, look here, we're going to be millionaires. <laughs> this stuff here is amazing. We got a ground, something groundbreaking here with this Jimmy Red cornbread. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is some yeah. wonderful stuff. Our neighbor, he's how old? 72. Yeah, and he said his grandmother made many a hookah cornbread, but that was the best he had ever had. Yep, and we lay it to... Quite a compliment. Yeah, we lay it to the... And it does have a very unique, earthy flavor to it. It's got kind of a bold flavor to it, I guess. It's, the, it's hard to describe, yeah. but it's very, very different. Yeah, and there was a video, what, what Tuesday night, I think, that, mm -hmm. or Sunday night. Yeah, Sunday night, probably. I don't know. I get mixed up. Yeah, yeah. It's out there on our playlist. If you yeah, want to so look we're, at it. we're talking about seeds starting today, but I was actually in Orlando. I was out of town over the weekend to a show called ASTA, and that's an acronym A S T A. And it's the world, I'm going to say world, I'm going to be liberal with that because I think I'm right. It's the world largest meeting with seed producers. And um, we was down there, they have different ones, but this one was tailored to vegetables. And uh, it was very interesting. First time I'd ever attended it, but people from all over the world were there. I all got kind of seed companies. All kind of seed companies. It was really amazing. I already knew this, 
but most if not all our flower seeds are produced in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Dutch people there representing their flower companies there and a lot of our microgreens come from the UK. Mm -hmm. So you was a little fish in the sea? I was a little fish in the sea, yeah. I was trying fish. to figure out everything down there. <laughs> you know, I had conversations with really nice people, but they just, you know, coming from the Netherlands or UK. A lot of people from the UK there. A lot of our vegetables and, and microgreens come from the UK. Mm. So, uh, you know, we still have a decent amount of seed production here in the United States, but it's mainly over in the western United States. Is that Maggie? Maggie's? Yeah, Maggie's over here. Over here snoring. So, uh, they is pockets, small pockets of seed production on the eastern United States. I'm talking about very small. But just about all of our seed production is done in Iowa, Idaho, uh, Arizona, over there in the dry California, of course, California, in the drier part because they don't have the disease pressure, the humidity we have. So they do a lot better job with seed production than we do. Seed production in the eastern United States is nearby impossible because of our humidity mm -hmm. and our weather patterns. So there. why is Netherlands such a good place, or UK? I'm assuming the Netherlands, which is a uh, Dutch. I'm assuming that it, their weather, the climate's conducive for it, but I think a lot of it's just tradition. You know, you'll find these pockets that have produced a certain thing for years and years and years. And I think that's part of I'm sure that their, their weather, their environment is wonderful for it. A lot of breeding has gone over mm -hmm. there for years and years and years. But just about, if you buy a flower seed, it's just about all of it comes from uh, from over there. So did you find some new seeds? I found some new seeds. I did. I was looking at some very unique stuff and I think I found everything but one of them. I oh, know. Yeah, we're having trouble uh, sourcing Roselle and I'm probably going, looks like I might have to go to Caribbean to source that. <laughs> so we're, we're having some issues there but we're going to come through. Yeah, I'd like to see you bring some seed back on the airplane. Somebody told me that uh, one of the seed companies I've told said it has to be fumigated before you brought it in. Mm. So, anyhow, we're working through all that. We need to get some because people's going to be wanting to plant roselle mm -hmm. before long. So, anyway, all right, so let's dig into when you should plant what. Right. Zone 9 and 10. That's you guys. So, do we want to talk about frost first? Yeah, let's you talk about that. No, that's skip fine. Over that. That's fine. Go ahead and talk Keep about that. Keep me on schedule. Keep me on schedule. So, it's very important to know when your last frost state is mm -hmm. before you start planning out what you're going to plant. When is our last frost date? March 15th. That's a good That's a good number there. It can vary a little bit from year to year, but that's pretty yeah, doggone close. Doggone close. And you know, give When you say take, law, last, it's the last of the winter, the first of the year. Yeah. Get confusing there. Last frost date. Of winter. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, March 15th is for us, and you can kind of move at about two right, weeks now, per zone. That's in zone eight, and we have an A and a B, and we're mm -hmm. in B. And even within the zone, it can vary. Yeah, from you. Courtney, to you. you know, if you're at the bottom of a, in a valley or on or top I'm, or closer to um, the coast. Sure. It's going to vary, so look. you can actually look up your last frost date by your zip code and it'll be a little, a little more specific. So we're very general today. Mm -hmm. You know, the old timers, and there's a little bit of truth in this, I think, you always went by when the Easter fell. Mm -hmm. If you had an early Easter, you would think you would have an early, well, you would have... There's always a or cold early snap before yeah, Easter. Yeah, if you had a late, if you had a late Easter, you, you yeah. knew that you was going to have a late cold snap there, so... Uh, I think there's some, probably some little bit of truth to that. But here in Zone 8, we're getting geared up to get everything ready. But you guys in Zone 9 and 10, it's time. It's yeah. time to move. So for your warm season crops, you can start them indoors in a greenhouse six to eight weeks before the last frost date. Mm, yes. So warm season, we're talking about tomatoes, all those yeah i figure six weeks on i always figure six weeks in the greenhouse on tomatoes now cool season we're talking about brassicas right mm -hmm. sure uh can be started 10 to 12 weeks before the last frost because they can actually take a little frost the yeah, start sure sure um and then cool season outdoors can be planted four to six weeks before the last frost date mm -hmm. yep 
and you normally in good shape there then and you can go ahead and direct seed your uh, radishes and your beets and everything pretty much when you seed your uh, brassicas in the greenhouse and i've been watching a lot of different um youtubers and they all have some different type of calendar or planning system but the overall message is get you a calendar back find your frost date back up the weeks and know when to plan so it's you see not, this right here yeah what does that look like gray mm -hmm. that's my calendar that's your calendar i have done it so many times i've got it all up here uh, it's all up there. I know I, I don't need a calendar for when I do my stuff because I've done it so many times. I know just psh, psh, psh. Well, good for you. For us other people, yep. um, I like to get a calendar and put on there when I need to, like my zinnias and my sunflowers, when I'm going to plant them and then back up my dates. Kind of helps me. Again, I'm a visual person. I need to write it down mm -hmm. and see it. Yep. So I've got some of my brassicas planted now. <coughs> A few I planted. Well, I've got two sets actually, I've already planted. All right, so let's talk about nine and ten. Okay. You guys in the deep, deep south, we're talking about Florida, we're talking about southern Texas, we're talking about the bottom end of Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, maybe. So, you guys can pretty much get started full fledged. Now, if you hadn't started your onions and you missed the onion thing in the fall of the year, you can still plant your onions now. They're just not going to maybe get quite as big on you, but you still have onions to enjoy. Brassicas, go ahead and get them in the ground. If you don't have them, I mean, excuse me, in the greenhouse, if you don't have them planted, go ahead and get them planted. And you may be a little late, but still, you'll still be fine. English peas, I can Oh, grow. yeah, yeah, yeah. And zone 10, you could pull, pretty soon you could plant your cucurbits and your squash to reach. I mean, I read that zone 10 really doesn't have a freeze they or don't. frost. They don't. Even during the Arctic blast. Right, West. right, they don't. They don't get very, very little. So you guys can move forward there. Now, zone nine, a little bit different. Zone nine, you can normally move zone nine two weeks before zone eight. So you guys can plant your tomatoes now. Yeah. You guys can plant your peppers now. So the last frost date for zone nine that I kind of looked at, and this is just a general, was February 15th. Mm, yeah, that's a, yeah. I'd so say So they could have been today. planting their tomatoes a couple weeks ago. They could have, however, I think it would be okay to do it now. I think right now, if I was doing it right now, it'd be the ideal time for me because I plant my tomatoes. So right 15th. now they can be planting their tomatoes. In the greenhouse. In the greenhouse, peppers. They could have already started peppers, but you could still start peppers. Melons. Melons. Melons, Any? yes, because you're looking at about four weeks on melons. So you could plant those in the greenhouse. And then you could then you guys can direct seed, this is on nine now, you can direct seed your squashes and cucumbers at the end of February. Now that's gonna be the first wow. of when you could get that crop in, but you can get them in then. You know, there has been times here at Zone 8 we have planted squash and cucumbers at the end of February. Yeah, I think the cold got them last dicey. year. It's <laughs> dicey, dicey, dicey to do that. I've been successful maybe two times out of 10 on that right. one. Right, and Zone 9 and 10 potatoes right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Get your potatoes in the ground. Yep. All right. Let's move on to zone eight because that's the one we're most familiar with is zone eight. Uh, and there have been so many of y'all that jumped the gun on this one right here. This is the problem with you jumping the gun on these tomatoes. It takes forever to get a tomato that big. It does not take long at all for it to get it that big to that big. It jumps in a hurry. So your process of getting it that big there is probably your most time consuming right there. Now, I've done this over and over and over for years and years and years, and this is, works for me. On the tomatoes, plant them between the 10th and the 15th. Your days to maturity on the tomato is around 70 days. Follow along with me here now. You plant your tomatoes between the 10th and the 15th. It takes us six weeks to grow out a tomato. So that's putting us at the end of March, 1st of April, we transplant it into the ground. We like let cold spells all kind of move over and your soil temperature warms up a little bit. We get our tomatoes in the ground, first of April. And you hadn't stepped them up. That's right out of the... Right out of the, the 162s or 128s, whatever you use. We put them directly into the ground. You got 70 days maturity on that seed pack. That 70 days is from the time it goes into the ground. So let's go 70 days from April to May to June. And when does our tomatoes get ready? June. First part of June. 
I don't care year after year, we're going to have tomatoes ready. The first week in June is going to be about the ideal time. You may, you may look up every now and then and get one or two the last week of May, but it's just about always the earliest we can grow a tomato out there is the first week of June. It has a lot to do with the daylight length. It has a lot to do with temperature. So that's what you're shooting for. Yeah. And zone seven, they're what, a couple weeks behind us? Yes, yes. So just move everything two weeks there. Mm -hmm. Now your peppers here in zone eight, that's a different story. Your peppers take a little bit longer. You can start your peppers probably around the 5th of February if you wanted to, on up to the 15th. I normally start mine the same time I do mm, tomatoes because- We could start, start them this weekend. We then. could start some this weekend. They take a little bit longer. Sweet peppers and everything, pretty much I can grow them in six weeks if I'm on my game. Now hot peppers, that's their story and everybody loves to grow hot peppers, especially some of these Carolina Reapers and things like that. Had a conversation over the weekend with a uh, pepper breeder. And we talked about how hard some of these hot peppers are to germinate. Mm -hmm. And he said one thing that he has found is to soak the seeds for a ah. little bit. Soak the seeds in water. He said that helps a little bit with the, you know, get them to germinate a little bit quicker there. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. All right. And for us, English peas, I can plant them right now, don't you think? Uh, I would wait. I would wait to about the 15th. Now, tell you the reason why. Why? If you get those English peas up about this big right here, and if you get a few warm days, you can do that. You can pop them out of the ground like this here. But you get one of those cold, cold snaps in here, it's going to tear them up. I always like to plant around around the 15th it's of February. Roll of the dice, isn't it? It's a roll of the dice. But if you get them up and uh, and you and you get lucky and don't have a lot of hard, hard cold on them, you can be okay. Flowers. <coughs> All flowers. Use first of sunflowers, zinnias, marigolds. Well now sunflowers is going to be about four weeks. If you transplant your sunflowers to four weeks max on those right there. So I wouldn't do those toward the end of February. Mm -hmm. What about calendrums, things like that? Now those are kind of your in the middle things. Those do good in the early, early spring. Mm -hmm. You would go ahead and start yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. Some of your cool weather stuff. But your warm weather flowers, I would wait to about the e last in last of February, last week or so. So what can we direct seed outside? We can direct seed pepper, excuse me, peppers. Beets, radishes, things like that. Spinach? Spinach, yep, yep. And some people's planting carrots. I've never planted carrots in the spring. They do okay a lot. Most people do plant their carrots in the springtime instead of in the fall and over winter. We're kind of the exception to that. But most people plant them in the springtime. You can still make carrots. The thing about that is, and here's where it gets into they're trouble. They're not as this. sweet in the springtime. They're not quite as sweet to the springtime. This is where we get in trouble every year. So we'll plant these cool weather crops at the first of February. If they don't mature out and get out of the way by April, we've lost interest in them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're ready to plant yours. And we're ready to plant those warm season cover, uh, crops. So they're holding up our real estate there and we don't have room to plant stuff. So that's where we lose our patience with these mm -hmm. cool season crops here. These kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, and all that kind of stuff. They're taking up that valuable, valuable real estate where we want to put peppers and tomatoes and corn and all that kind of stuff. So we got to be careful to plant those so they mature out and get out of our way by the time we move in that warm mm -hmm. season stuff. Five and six. Ooh, let's talk about six. You skipped six. Oh, that is five and six. six. Yeah, excuse yeah. me, five and six. So six. Six. Last frost date, they say around May 1st. Yeah, yeah. Zone five around May 15th. Um, they need to be planting 12 weeks indoors before their last frost day. On cool season stuff. Yeah, so that would be, all right, so zone six, first of May, let's back off, tw you said 12 weeks? So that's three months. That would be February, March, April, that would be now. So they could be starting some of their cabbages and broccoli and things like that in the greenhouse mm -hmm. now. And that gives them four weeks in the greenhouse. They transplant them in March. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then of course they want to wait on their tomatoes to plant them in the greenhouse to probably next month. Now you guys give us some insight there. If you're in zone five and six, when do you plant your, start your tomatoes and peppers in the greenhouse? That'd be interesting to see there. Does it take you six weeks like it does us to grow them in the greenhouse? How long does it take you to grow your brassicas in the greenhouse? Same thing, four weeks. Let us know what you think on that right there. Okay. 
So zone three and four. Ooh, it's only three or four there on the own there. Yeah. They just need to plan. They just need to stay warm right or now. Or grow some lettuce inside. Yeah, yeah. Under some grow lights. Mm -hmm. Um so they're, they're very cold in February, and they're going to be cold for a while. Cold for a while. Bless your heart. Yeah. That's what we see in the South. Bless we'll be wearing heart. shorts down here. Uh, I talk to a lot of people, and I, and I tell them that we're, by the time July 4th rolls around, we're through in our garden. Yeah. True. It's heat, hot. heat has burned it up. So we take the uh, end of Burn July up. off, and we start uh, back again for our fall planting in August. So. They're exactly the opposite. They just get in the middle of that around 4th of July. It's just strange, isn't it? Yeah. Then we switch to mainly sunflowers. Oh, yeah. Warm season sweet cover crops. Are going. Yeah. Speaking of sweet potatoes, we're going to be offering sweet potato slips this spring. So you can order your sweet potato slips right here at Hoss. Good deal. Yep. What right. else do we have? Well, I didn't want to say anything, but we may have some plants for sale. Mm, some plants that only we will have. Yep, so we're going to have some brassicas uh, ready probably, I hope, by the end of February. If you sign up for our newsletter, we'll be sending out some emails letting you know. We're going to have some uh, collards, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, oh, I can't, some kale, ready some plants maybe by the end of february first of march and then after that we're going to have some hallucinator tomato plants red snapper tomato plants and i think we've got shelby tomato plants Ooh. yep and then we're going to have some peppers some of the hallucinator series peppers so we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming along this spring here and those varieties folks you can't get anywhere else as far as plants go as far as plants yep all right, so let's move in to the Garden Spotlight of the Week. Now, this is probably one of the best ones we've had. Mm -hmm. Right here, folks. So this is Julie... Boken Camp. I want you to look at there. She's, Boken Camp. She's got a really nice community garden. In Mer Meridian, Idaho. Yep. Zone 6. There she is showing her... So here's Zone 6. six. Yep, she's showing her carrots right there. And you know they got a really neat looking garden. I want you to just look at this picture right here with the sunsets going in it. And those those flowers are popping right there. Isn't it beautiful the way they got the fence around there? Yep. And look at some of our harvest right there. Some of the pretty zucchinis in there, squash, and all kind of tomatoes right there. I could look at this for hours. And this is something I want to do in our garden. I'm gonna put one of these signs up in our garden. <laughs> Do you know what any of that means? Yeah, it's just showing directions, different things. I've always thought those was cool. And you can put the mileage there where it goes. I don't know, it's just kind of a cool <laughs> thing there. And another last picture of her garden. I love a nice, neat looking garden. I like the way she got the walkways done there. Oh, look at that fence. That's yep. the kind of fence I want to run. You know, when I seen that fence, I thought about that. I like that fence. Yeah. Yep. She's got everything laid out neat there. That's, I'm going to change my garden somewhat to that type of style this year. See how I can manage it differently. Thank you, Julie, for sending that in. Garden Spotlight of the Week, Meridian, Idaho. A community garden in City Park. All right. Old goat. Old goat. Okay. Somewhere on the set is our old goat figurine. He's not sitting beside me. And if... Put in the comments where he's located this week and next week we'll draw your name for a prize. So this is last week's comments. And the winner is ha, Traveling Grandma Gardener. Right there, Traveling Grandma Gardener. Send us your shipping address to serve at hallstools.com. We'll get you a wonderful prize in the mail. Yep. All right, folks. You want to talk about potatoes? Yeah, let's talk about potatoes just a minute. There's very few potatoes left. Very few potatoes left. We about sold out, and we've increased our order several times. We can't get any more. So what potatoes we got left is going to be it. We're expecting to ship it in around the 10th or maybe a day or two after. It's according to weather of February. Don't fret. We'll get your potatoes to you in time for you to plant. So we got a few varieties left. If you haven't got what you need, get them, and we'll be shipping out potatoes. We're shipping them out every day. 
But we'll be shipping out potatoes the rest of this month. Except for Red New Orleans. We kind of ran short on them. Yeah, we'll be shipping them out in a few days. So just a few days we'll have that other truck in. The problem is our potatoes come from way, way, way up north, as is just about all seed potatoes. And too. there's a little cold spell. And we're at the mercy of the weather when we can get a truck out of there. So we'll kind of have to wait to that. So there can be a few days very so we'll kind of have to work with the weather. And then sometimes you can't get a truck when you need it, like it was last year. Now this year's been a lot better, but... Everything in the supply chain seems to be a lot better than it was last year, so we got our fingers yeah, crossed there. It's people worried about getting them in time to plant, getting them in time to, uh, what do you call that? Chit. Yeah. C-H-I-T, folks. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you for joining us. How long do you need to let them chit? Oh, for a couple of weeks. If, you can plant them right away. Yeah, you can if you need to. But I, you can cut them up and just let them out for a couple Those of days. Those that I planted last year, I just cut them up and planted I do, I do. I've done that too, but you can, if you if you got plenty of time, you can cut them up and you can let them lay out and they'll sprout. You don't want to sprout too much or don't fret. I have cut them up just like you. Now, I do like to cut them up a day or two ahead of time and let them heal over and then they'll kind of sprout just a little bit and plant them. And I promise you make potatoes every time. People get too carried away with this potato thing. Potatoes are easy to grow, folks. Easy to grow. It's hard to mess up growing a potato. The one thing you can do to mess up your potato crop is to overwater it or you get too much rain and you plant it in a low spot and they rot in the ground. Besides that, it's hard to mess up potatoes. Mm. Yep. Got it. Got it. Thank you for joining us, folks. It's time for you to get out and get your things started. Time to get some stuff direct seeded in the ground. Time to get all the garden energy going. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get out of there and get dirty.